Hello everyone and welcome to our channel. Today we talk about Starship vs. Orbit, declared by Elon Musk. So let's get started. SpaceX has chosen not to try to launch its huge new rocket for the first time because of a problem with the pressurization system. Even so, SpaceX teams kept doing the countdown and acting out takeoff as if it were a dress rehearsal that was supposed to end right before the planned launch time. Elon Musk and the people he hired to work at the company he started, SpaceX, have high hopes that their huge rocket could one day send people to the moon and Mars. After the launch was called off, Elon Musk wrote on Twitter, learned a lot today, adding, I'll try again in a few days. On Monday, the weather was great and the loading of the rocket with its cold fuel, liquid oxygen and methane went exactly as planned. Less than 10 minutes before liftoff, Elon Musk wrote that a pressure end valve seems to be frozen, which is what caused the launch to be delayed. The huge black and silver rocket has never been launched in its full form, which includes its first stage, which is called Super Heavy because it's so powerful. The first versions of the upper stage, which looked like something from a science fiction movie, were launched many kilometers into the air and then crashed four times before landing upright in 2021. The Starship is more than 120 meters tall and made of polished steel all the way through. It has 33 main engines and a thrust of 7.57 million kilograms. During a test on the launch pad in January, all but two of the methane fuel first stage engines fired up. Musk says this will be enough to get into orbit. Because it's so strong, Starship can lift up to 227 tons and take up to 100 people on a trip to Mars. Starship is a clear winner when compared to NASA's moon rockets like the Saturn V from the Apollo era and the Space Launch System SLS from the Artemis program, which made its first trip to the moon at the end of 2018. It also does a better job than the former Soviet Union's N-1 moon rocket. The N-1 moon rocket was only in the air for one minute before it exploded. There were no people on board. Before putting people in the Starship, Musk wants to use it to send satellites into low Earth orbit. These will include his own Starlink satellites, which will connect to the internet. The test flight was supposed to last for an hour and a half, and it wasn't supposed to go all the way around the Earth. Musk said that one of the most important goals of the flight was to move the rocket a long way away from where it was launched. Those who use Twitter were told, just don't blow up the launch pad. SpaceX, a company based in California, is putting most of its attention on the moon for the time being with its Starship upper stage rocket. NASA paid the company $3 billion or 2.7 billion euros to put humans on the surface of the moon as early as 2025. This will be the first time in more than 50 years that people will land on the moon. The NASA Orion ship and the Space Launch System rocket will take the moonwalkers away from Earth. When they get to lunar orbit, they'll switch to Starship and fall to the moon's surface. After that, they'll go back to Orion. Starship needs to refuel in low Earth orbit before it can continue its trip to the moon and beyond. SpaceX's idea for an orbital store is that Starships without windows would be used as tankers. Starship isn't just for NASA though, the first private team to take Starship into Earth's orbit. Then there will be two private trips to the moon with no landings and just flying around. SpaceX has secondary rounds about twice a year so that employees and other firm shareholders can sell stock. However, Musk said that the company does not expect to need to raise funding to improve the Starship program and its other projects. As far as I know, we don't need to raise more money for SpaceX, Musk said. Elon Musk, the CEO of SpaceX, said, As for the exciting first fully stacked Starship rocket launch on April 20th, the results were about what I expected, or maybe even a little better. SpaceX has several more versions in different stages of completion, and they hope to use the tall rocket to reach orbit again in the next few months. He thought there was a probably 80% chance that a Starship launch this year would reach orbit but he thinks there's a 100% chance of reaching orbit within 12 months. The Starship flight took off and met some of its goals, but Musk gave more information about some problems the rocket had. Only 30 of the 33 Raptor engines at the base of the Super Heavy Lifter were lit when the rocket took off. Musk said that SpaceX chose not to start three engines because they were not healthy enough to bring them up to full thrust. As the Starship went up into the sky, it moved to the side of the launch pad. Musk said this was because of engine failures. About 27 seconds into the flight, SpaceX lost communications with another engine. 
This happened when some kind of energetic event took away the heat shield from several other engines. When SpaceX lost thrust vector control or the power to steer the rocket 85 seconds into the flight, things really hit the fan. Musk also said that it took about 40 seconds for the rocket's AFTS or automatic flight termination system which destroys the vehicle if it goes off course to turn on, which SpaceX would need to fix before the next try to launch. The rocket's success was shown by how well it stayed together during the launch. For example, it made it through max Q or the point when the air pressure on the rocket is at its highest. The vehicle's structural margins seem to be better than we thought, Musk said. We can tell because the vehicle did somersaults at the end and stayed together. Musk says that SpaceX has already made so many improvements to future prototypes. The business must make sure that we don't lose thrust vector control with the next launch. Back on Earth, Musk said that as the rocket took off, the booster made a rock tornado under it. SpaceX hasn't seen evidence that the rock tornado actually damaged engines or heat shields in a material way, but Musk said the company certainly didn't expect the rock tornado to destroy the concrete on the launch pad and leave a hole in its path. One of the more likely reasons is that we may have pressed the sand under the concrete so hard that it bent and then broke, Musk said. On the next flight, the focus will be on starting the 33 Raptor engines faster and getting off the pad faster, Musk said. He also said that it took SpaceX 5 seconds to start the engines and launch the rocket, which is a really long time to be blasting the pad. The business hopes to cut that time in half on the next try. Photos of the aftermath show the engines of the Super Heavy rocket blew up. According to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, the launch sent concrete and metal thousands of feet away and made a cloud of dust and crushed concrete that dropped up to 6.5 miles from the launch site. Musk said on Saturday that the damage to the pad is relatively small and should be fixed quickly. He thought that after the needed repairs, SpaceX will probably be ready to launch in 6 to 8 weeks. SpaceX will repair a few fuel tanks near the launch pad. Even though it was hit by some pretty big chunks of concrete, the 500-foot-tall skyscraper is in good shape with no meaningful damage. Musk thinks that the requalification of the AFTS that killed the rocket because it took way too long to light up will be the hardest part of getting back in the air. SpaceX is moving forward with a plan to put steel plates under the next Starship's rocket launch tower. These plates will be cooled by a water system. That's it for today, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a like and comment down your thoughts on this and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching.